Last episode, I built a new factory, stuck an infinite andesite machine inside, and built a new truck to transport that over to our blaze cake factory. But now it's time to change the pace a little bit. There is a reason I chose this location to build after all, and that's because of this. Not the mansion, but the coastline. And I think today we're going to make a start on our dockyard so we can receive goods via ships from across the ocean. But first, we really gotta do something and it might upset some of you. However, this thing has gotta go. I did consider keeping it and trying to integrate it into the area, but the styles are just too different and I don't think there's anything I can do to this to make it look good. I mean, it really is a terrible looking building. So there's only one thing to do and that is to send off the world eater, or I guess in this case, a mansion eater. Oh, oh, the frames. Oh, this, this is a very big drill. Let's just watch the house get removed, shall we? Oh, it's all gone wrong. So let's just do this first, lock rotation. Let's try that again, shall we? we go, the mansion's gone, as well as a huge chunk of the coastline. But basically my plan here is just to make a massive sort of dockyard area. We're going to have lots of big warehouses, a few factories and all sorts going on. But it looks a little bit low right now and I'm fully aware of that. That is because I also want to make sure I've got a couple of blocks of space beneath. So yeah, the actual floor level is going to be here. And that just means I can route the power around and do all the things I need to do down here without interfering too much above. But at the moment, this just looks a bit like a chunk error. So what we're going to do is sort out all the landscape around it. I am actually going to be putting up sort of a retaining wall around this bit because I do want the dockyard to be lower than this bit. I need to get the actual floor in. And then I'm going to need to create a few sort of road ramps, entrances and so on to get into this area as well. So I've got lots of work to do, but luckily today is Monday and this video is not due until Sunday, so I've got plenty of time to work on this. I'm going to have a nice relaxing afternoon just terraforming. You'll probably see a random montage or something. And this isn't going to be just any montage, it's a talky montage. So I spent the rest of the day making the area look a bit nicer to prep it for upcoming builds. I first put in retaining walls around the new hole to give it some structure, then outlined where the upper dock would be and built out a seawall using more stone brick to give me a feel for scale. I then built a small train contraption with 30 rollers to help me lay out a stone floor nice and quickly, then installed a road ramp in one corner so vehicles can access the docks down the line. I then added a lower dock for smaller boats and an even lower one for the smallest of boats that would be using these docks. And now it's Thursday. But I've not had a chance to get on for the last couple of days. I've been secretly recording a new mini series for next month. Shh, you heard nothing. But I've been giving this area a lot of thoughts. I've got loads of really cool ideas. And to be honest, I can't wait to get started on today's plans. Because today, it's actually time. We're gonna make, brace yourselves, a kelp farm. I know, I know, it's almost day 3000 and we still don't have a kelp farm in a very create-focused world. A shame. But today, that shame ends. And by today, I guess I mean tomorrow. The sun's going down. Okay, so today we're going to build a kelp farm, but just look at this area. We've got so much space to work with. The dock's looking pretty cool. I mean, it all needs a lot of design. It's pretty much just solid stone brick at the moment. We'll have some nice designs on the walls in future. But for now, we've got a pretty good base to work with, and I know the area looks absolutely massive, but if you actually look at it on the map, it's technically smaller than this one here. Not that we've filled this one here yet either, but that's fine. But that's enough waffle. We need to talk kelp farms. And I've been thinking about this a lot over the last couple of days. And I think I've got a plan. And the best thing about this kelp farm we're going to build is that I don't actually really need to build a kelp farm. I just need to build a kelp collection device. I mean, there's so much kelp out here on the ocean anyway. Why don't we just harvest that? But we can't harvest the kelp until we've actually got somewhere to put it. So over here, I did start marking out roughly where I thought some roads could go. I think we're going to have a big one along the front here. We'll have this obviously connect up to the ramp. And we'll probably have some other smaller roads snaking about around the back. But that means we've got a great big space here where I think I'm going to put a row of warehouses. Maybe only two or three, and they're not going to be as big as the ones we've got up there. Maybe more the size of the smaller side bits. But if we can get up a few warehouses, that's going to give us lots of place to store things that we bring in from other places across the ocean. And it also means we've got a little bit of space for some machines, because, well, we're going to need some of them today as well. Raw kelp's no good. And to kick all of this off, I think I'm going to get a road in, because I did start putting a road in up here, but it's kind of occurred to me we don't really want this kind of shabby, broken road connecting main areas and things like that. This really should be a little bit more like the road we have around here, the deep slate one. That one over there. So working our way backwards from collecting the kelp to storing the kelp to actually building a road, 
I think we're just going to get the road in first. So we need to connect it up to here. We need to swoop it round. We need to go down this side. And then we need to, of course, get a road on the dockyard itself. But as that means I'm just going to be placing deep slate for the next couple of hours, you're probably going to get like a 10 second time lapse of me doing so because it's going to be boring. <laughs> Apart from the fact it needs a bit of texture, the road's looking pretty good. At least it's in place where it needs to be. We just need to tidy it up a little bit. I mean, that corner there looks a little bit fat and so on. We need to put in some other blocks to kind of mix it up a little bit. But you get the idea. It's certainly more than enough for now. Because now what we need to do is design a warehouse. And I do, of course, want to make sure it ties in with everything we've got going on up here. So we're probably going to do a similar sort of shape and palette to what we've got going on on this side. And of course, the first thing we're going to do is put down a nice foundation. Because the way I want this to work, I kind of want the trucks to come down here i want them to reverse up to the warehouse into loading docks which basically means i need everything to be at least a block off the ground so let's just stick a platform down around here and i do want a road to be able to go along the back of the warehouses as well so i guess the furthest we can come back is probably about there if this is going to be the front of the warehouse, we're going to want some bays. So let's just do a couple of bays like this. I think that size will work quite nicely for us. But we're going to want these bays a little bit deeper because we want the vehicles to basically be able to get completely off the road when they reverse in here. That should be big enough. So that means that's going to be the edge there. This will be the edge on the center bits. And that will be the edge there. So we can probably just fill the rest of this with deep slates. Yeah, I reckon that's going to work. But now what I need to do is get myself some acacia for the walls. I need to get some spruce logs. I think that's what we're using over there. These sort of weird strip spruce logs. But for the roof, instead of using mangrove, I think I might use some netherrack instead. Because the netherrack bricks themselves actually look pretty good. And just to clarify, I mean these netherrack bricks, not the actual netherrack bricks. But I think these look pretty good. And then we need loads of acacia as well, which we need to turn into firewood acacia logs. We need some spruce that we turn into center cut spruce logs. We need some girders because girders. And we just need a bit more spruce because we're going to need to do the edges of the roofs. But that should be pretty much all we need to get the basic shape down. So let's crack on and build a warehouse. Time lapse time. funky music and a bit of block placing later i think we're done this warehouse should work nicely it looks similar to those ones but not the same it's got an extra splash of color and the roof's a lot brighter too but we've got plenty of space on the inside we've got these little bays here so we'll be able to reverse trucks up and pick things up from the front and i reckon if we were to get a couple more of these along this row that could look pretty good so i guess that means we need to crack out the schematic cannon but i think we can easily sit another two next to it here and that's still going to leave plenty of space for other things and it's not going to be too overwhelming but it should give us plenty of space so I do have my schematic cannon, I've got a table, I've got the schematic and quill, and an empty one as well, so we can do everything we need. So let's grab a schematic of all of this, and we'll call this Dockyard Warehouse Red. Make a schematic of that, and maybe we'll put that about there, just leave some space in between so we can have a road or something else around there. And we've got a clipboard here as well, so we can find out exactly what we need. Beautiful, we've got a great big list of stuff. If we put a chest here and start loading it up with what it needs, we should be good. And I think I've managed to get everything together in these three barrels, uh, apart from the frame double slab. We'll ignore those because that doesn't actually exist. I just need to place two slabs independently. But everything else, we're loaded up on. Apart from maybe a bit more gunpowder. Not a problem, we can quickly pop back and get some. Although we only have 20, we're definitely going to need to make a gunpowder farm at some point. But that'll be more than enough to get this building down. So chuck that in there, we'll just check this. Okay, I think we're good, let's go. we go we now have a second warehouse we just need to fill in some of these framey bits here and something i did actually notice while we were doing that is that this window is actually in the wrong place it should be one block over it's not actually in line with this one or the fans but that's an easy fix i also need to add these double slabbed frame blocks down here and add in the glass but apart from that the cannon did everything for me and thinking about it i have no idea why i've done these ones as framed blocks because well these glass blocks can just sit in here anyway but oh well 
We should probably fix the original build as well while we're here. There we go. All fixed. And it's definitely looking better with two warehouses. But I think three might be even better. Yep, I was right. Three definitely looks better. Not that I have any idea what we're going to be using most of these for, but I'm sure we'll fill them up over time. However, the first one, I know that we want to use for kelp. And when it comes to storage, we're going to use a combination of vaults, but I think we're also going to have an extended draw system under this area as well. So I need to have a look at what the coordinates are around about here somewhere. So that's minus 705. And our drawers have a range of 75 blocks, so to play it safe, if we were to go here somewhere. And I'll just mark that with a completely different block for now, but that's where we need to put our draw controller. And that way we can reach the far warehouse over there. And if we look at our mini map, we can see we're almost central, so we'll also be able to reach a good distance in that direction as well. However, thinking about it, we probably also want to be able to reach the back of the docks over in this direction. So we probably want to go somewhere more around here. And that should hopefully give us the range we need. But let's not worry about that now for now what we need to do is figure out how we're actually going to collect the kelp and i've got an idea for this i think should work quite well i don't know if you've been hearing all the screams of phantoms over the last few episodes but that's because i haven't slept in quite a while because i've been trying to collect some phantom membranes i did build a very small temporary farm but it didn't really work so instead i've just been avoiding sleep and while i'm building over here anytime i've been hearing phantoms i've just given them a bit of the old chop chop and our efforts have paid off to the tune of 92 phantom membranes which we're going to be using to make phantom track which works just like regular train track except it's invisible which means once i've placed it down as long as i don't have this in my hand it won't be visible at all so we can place it just below the surface of the sea and then if we have a boat going around with some harvesters on it should be able to just gather loads of kelp for us and then drop it off at the dock at least that's the plan and thankfully each phantom membrane gives us 32 train tracks so we should have absolutely loads of the stuff so let's grab the membrane a bunch of iron and get this track made up and i'm hoping we can just use the machine over here Although I'm going to need to make a couple of adjustments. So let's grab another deployer. Let's move that out the way. Put the deployer there. And the press there. Now if we give these guys a stack of iron each. Uh, we should probably remove the saw as well. We don't need that. Just replace that with an item drain for now. That's fine. But that should make us our phantom membrane track. Or our phantom rail I think it's called. Yep wonderful. Look at that. And in fact if we steal that drawer and put our backpack here. It should go directly into that. Excellent. We are going to have absolutely loads of this stuff. And with that, we've got just shy of 3,000 rails. Amazing. So if we have a look at the ocean around here and where the kelp currently is, I mean, we could, of course, plant more. But, you know, I want some fully organic kelp. So if we were to harvest it from over here and maybe over here as well, we could have like a little line that goes through that probably. And then maybe come into this port and then sort of swing back out get all of that go around this way grab loads of that do a bit of back and forth maybe look back round, drop it off and so on in a big circle i reckon that could work i'm keeping an eye out for more phantoms as well of course but there's some pretty good kelp patches out here so i'm just going to start placing rail here we can use the kelp and yeah look if i go like this it disappears which is awesome but for now i just need a kind of back and forth route across this kelp patch and a short while later, we've got a somewhat messy route for our little boat to take once we eventually make it. But I think that's going to work quite nicely. So it will start here around the dock somewhere. And then it's going to swoop around this way. Go around a really big loop through all of this kelp at the back there. Go right through this little patch here all the way around. Do a loop-de-loop -loop here. And then go through this last big patch here on the way back to dock. And that should pick up loads of the stuff. But we need a boat to be able to do that. So that's our next task. Make some kind of fishing trawler type thing. And we've actually still got over 2,000 Phantom Rail, which is awesome. Because that might come in handy for another project I want to do later. I'm not going to use it for the vehicles though. They've already got their own track. Anyway, distractions aside, I need to go get myself lots of stuff and things to be able to make some kind of a trawler, I guess. And I think I want to use green terracotta for this trawler. Have a nice sort of dark green, maybe with a white body on the top. But for that, we need lots of green dye and that's why I'm making lots of flowers here because if we take these and chuck them in the crushing wheel over here we should get some green dye not very much okay I guess we need a whole lot more roses that's a bit more like it although we now have a ridiculous amount of red dye as well but at least we can get our green terracotta and then we'll just grab some wood because we're gonna need framed blocks no doubt and what else might we need we want a white sort of engine body area on it maybe the limestone would be best and a little bit of red terracotta as well. And I think pretty much everything else I need is going to be in this create backpack here. Oh, actually, tell a lie. We're going to need some barrels. 
And we're going to need some glass for the windows. And with the barrels, if I remember correctly, yep, yeah, there we go. You can get fish barrels. Bit more on theme, I guess. Okay, so we need to build a boat. And I think what I'm actually going to do is probably just stick a station down on a bit of this phantom track and build it out here. I think that's going to be the easiest thing to do because then we can make sure it's all going to line up. So we'll just put a station here. We'll hide it in the seafloor. Go for create new train. And oh, okay, good. It does at least highlight the bit that we need to go on. That's good. And I think it makes sense to grab the invisible bogey here. We don't want to be seeing wheels on our boat after all. And for now, I'm going to make this section of track as small as possible. So we're just going to remove some of the phantom rail here. In fact, if I put it in my offhand, I can see what I'm doing. Doing. But this means we can proper sort of wrap around this area here and yeah, we can just put the trap back afterwards once we turn this solid again. But I guess I need to figure out how I want to do this. Size wise, I think something about that should work. I just need to actually make the frame look look like a ship because currently it's just a bunch of squares. But I think this is where the frame slabs are going to come in extremely handy. Let's see if we can get a slightly less basic shape sorted. A bit of messing around with some framed blocks later and I think I've got a basic shape in. And my plan here for all these top framed blocks is to basically add some spruce and give it kind of like a ledge. Maybe something like that. I think that should help get us started. Although we really could do with a deck so let's get something in here. In fact let's use these larger planks. I think they're going to look a bit better. And then and my thinking is at the back here we'll put the sort of control cabin then we'll give it a little roof as well so something like that and then we can put a little door at the back let's maybe get this filled in a little bit and to be honest i kind of want to have glass like here and here and then at the front in fact at the front here that should work fine can we get yes these and then what i'm hoping is if we do that and that and then put the glass in there and there yeah, that looks cool. But I think we'll just do the roof and this industrial iron. That should set it off nicely and tie in with the windows, I guess. Although we'll put some solid blocks at the back here because we're probably going to want to put some kind of little masty aerial chimney type thing or something on it. Probably, maybe, who knows. So at the front here, I want to have some kind of a storage area. So, well, where they catch all the fish and stuff. They need somewhere cold to put them, right? And I know that this is a kelp boat and we're making it look like a fishing boat. But, I mean, who, who knows what a kelp boat looks like? A fishing boat's just going to look better overall, I think. So let's build some kind of a fridge type thing here. Maybe a couple of slopey bits. And I think we can actually get rid of some of these, right? Then we can just jam some fish barrels in here, which is also going to serve as storage for the actual kelp, which is marvellous. I think that works quite nicely. And how are we looking from afar? Not bad. We're definitely going to need to get some sort of textured blocks on this green area because it all kind of gets lost, really. And we need a rudder. And I think our best bet for a rudder might well be framed walls because at least they're then going to sit central on this block at the back here. Yeah, that kind of works. And these boats always have sticky uppy bits at the back, which could be rods, they could be aerials, they could be poles for drying nets on. I honestly have no clue. And we should probably have a couple of other masts around here somewhere as well. Well, we're almost done with the boat. I just need to get some texture on this green bit here. So I'm thinking if we add some of these sort of tile pieces now and then and that should help break up the hull a little bit at least all right looking good i think i'm happy with the boat itself now we just need to figure out where the harvesters are gonna go i think what i'm gonna do is punch out a small hole at the bottom here and it would probably help if i had more than one harvester so we're gonna need to go make some of them but my plan is literally just stick these in a beam across here we'll just have a nice big line of them and then i'll remove these temporary blocks here and it, i mean it's going to be visible but it should fit okay i think but what do i need to make more harvesters okay well we can make three more in our bag i suppose what are we missing iron sheets easy enough let's go get some then make a bunch more of these attach these to the limestone blocks and then remove the limestone blocks we don't want those but i feel like they're gonna need some kind of structural support so well you know go to time okay and in theory that should go around and hoover up all the kelp we've got a secret door at the back here as well i just need to add some train controls and a seat so i think i'm gonna have to remove that to be able to get the train controls in but that's not really an issue and there's the seats now let's glue this thing together take it for a spin and hope we can collect some kelp 
Although one thing that does occur to me is if the kelp has grown sort of one level above the harvesters, it might leave a small trail of sort of loose entities because it's only collecting the sort of second layer. But I'm not overly concerned about that. I'm sure it'll be fine. Now let's turn this into a train. Although I suppose it's a fishing boat, but uh, yeah, we'll just call it the Kelpinator for now. What a great name. And we'll call the station the Kelp Fields, just in case we do need to come back at any points. But before we can go anywhere and test this, I do need to reconnect all the rail that we removed. So let's just do that. Oh no. I have blocks in my offhand. I've just placed loads of... Ah, oh, dang it. All right, let's get rid of these. Everything's been cleared up. Let's give this thing a go. And we're off. Everything's working wonderfully. Look, we're harvesting kelp as we go around. And it pulls into the dock with all of the waiting nastiness. Okay, maybe, maybe we shouldn't pull into the dock just yet. But it looks like it's going to work a treat. And without even doing the whole route, we got three and a half stacks of kelp as well. So yeah, this should actually be quite productive. Although what I'm going to need to do now is put the station over this side where it can offload and, well, actually put some kind of storage interface on it so it can offload. I'll probably just offload directly into the harbour wall. Just put it into some storage drawers and then make it appear over at the warehouse. I think that's going to be the cleanest way to do this. But before I do any of that, I think I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea. It's been a hard morning. Right, well, I've got a fresh cup of tea. Let's just add a station around here somewhere. We can move that later if needs be. Well, we can move that bit there. Ideally, I don't really want to be moving the station because now we're going to get it linked up to the storage stuff. So let's pull into the station and see where we line up. Okay, and if we disassemble this, it's gonna destroy a little bit of my wall, but that's fine. Because what we need to do is put a storage interface. I think we're gonna have to have it there. And on the boat, stick it there, and that should connect. I mean, it sticks out a little bit, but that's fine. So if we reassemble the train, reattach the rail, and pull into the station properly, that should, hopefully, connect the storage interfaces down below. Yep, look at that, perfect. And we can fix that wall as well and just pretend that doesn't go through it. It's fine. So what I now need to do is probably make a whole load more spruce trim. That is not going to be enough. But we're also going to need the slave controllers and probably a smart shoot as well, just so we can unload it nice and quickly. So we'll stick the controller slave there, the smart shoot there. And then all we need to do is connect this trim all the way back to the main dock where we'll put a storage drawer controller in. So that's about as far as it's going to be able to go. So we'll stick a storage drawer here for now, I guess. Storage drawer controller that is, but I need to go make one first. So I need a diamond, I need some stone, and I think I need to make myself a drawer or two. Then I should be able to make one of these. And if we stick that there, and then put a drawer here, will it get full of kelp? Yes, it will. Excellent. That means it's within range, which is exactly what we wanted, but now we need to go that way. Because what I want to be doing is bringing up the kelp probably in this corner here. So we'll just put some trim across the ceiling here and connect it up to... Oh, I've gone too far. Over here. Then we'll bring the trim up a bit further. I'm just going to grab the kelp out of there, and I'm going to go put it back in the boat just to make sure that still connects. Well, it's disappearing, so it's got to be going somewhere. And that somewhere is indeed over here. Brilliant. I'll tell you what, I am going to start sleeping now. We've got plenty of phantom rail. I'm getting fed up with all the other mobs. So now we know we can store kelp over here and we've got a way to harvest it. I reckon we can probably get away with setting up a train schedule now. So let's grab ourselves a lead. I think I've got some on the airship. By the way, absolutely loving this grappling hook. I can get around so quickly now. So we need one of them. Do I have a train schedule in my backpack? I do. We've got two there. So let's find a fishing boat operator. Who would operate a fishing boat? I don't think I want to fly this time. I wonder, is that bear still lurking around over here? No, it appears not. There was one. Oh, no, there he is. Come on, you. I'm sure nothing could possibly go wrong making a bear a fisherman. To be honest, it's probably a bit big, isn't he? You've escaped this one, sir. Let me slowly lower you down so I don't kill you. Oh, he's still going to die. Oh, he's angry. Sheep. Why not? Come along, you. I mean, we could have done a seal, but for some reason, they've all disappeared. Weird. But you, sir, you look right at home in there. Perfect. So we want you to travel to the kelp fields and, to be honest, maybe maybe just sort of sit there for 20 seconds, make it look like you're out there fishing. Why not? Then we'll come to the lower docks, uh, stay here for about 30 seconds. Basically, I don't want it just to come along, drop everything off, and then leave straight away. I think it's just going to look a little bit better if it's actually stopped here for a moment. We don't care about efficiency. We just want it to look cool. Right, off you go. <laughs> Well, the boat's 
just come in from his second trip, but it appears to be working absolutely fine. Let's go see how much kelp we're getting. Okay, so we're getting a good few stacks every trip that he does. I mean, that's from, what, three, three and a half trips? This is good. But what's not good is the fact that that's just kelp. Kelp on its own is absolutely useless. So now what I need to do is get this processed and over to here, really, so it's ready to be collected as probably kelp blocks. I think you can break kelp blocks back down again into cooked kelp, right? We should probably test that. But the first thing I want to do is get all of this into a nice big vault. But we have fancy vaults these days because we've got access to shipping containers, so I'm going to go make a few of those, I think. Although, to be honest, I think I've actually got some over here. We've got some grey ones, we've got some other grey ones, and we've got some red ones. And we've got some purple ones, but they can stay right there. So, first things first, I think I want a nice big Big red vault here and this is what we're going to use for sort of main kelp storage i don't think we want to take over more than half the warehouse though and then we just need to feed these into this vault here so if we grab a chute and a funnel that should do it although we will make sure we're filtering that because we're probably gonna end up with other stuff going around the system at some point I would hope, otherwise all this has been for nothing. And what I want to do is process this into dried kelp blocks, which, as I say, I think, yeah, we can break them back down again, so that's good. So what we're going to need to do is, first off, cook the kelp. Then we're just going to need to pack it down into kelp blocks and then store it in a vault over there. So it should be quite a simple process, actually. Probably want to get this stuff cooked up quite quickly, so maybe we should have sort of three depots that are doing the cooking. Then we can have that go into a small vault. It doesn't need to be a particularly big one. And for cooking these, we don't actually need lava. We can just use campfires, can't we? I'm thinking about it before I get too carried away. We're going to need power over here, aren't we? So I might bring power up here, I think. But we need to get this connected all the way over to the power plants over there. But Smart Beardy, when he was digging the hole down here, has actually already dug sort of a route through. And, well, I have tried to work out roughly where the rail is going to need to go, but we'll fiddle with that later. But we can access the power right here. We just got to get this in the right place. Okay, we have power. What I need now, however, is some encased fans. And I don't think we have any here. Oh, no, we've got six. Perfect. So if we're going to have a space, we're going to have a campfire, then I guess the fan is going to be there. Which means I guess we're replacing this beam with some encased chain drives. Not a problem. Apart from the fact I haven't got any. So let's make a bunch of these. Get those on there. Are they spinning the right way? Nope. No, they are not. And now they are. Perfect. So we just need a few campfires and we'll stick those in there, there and there. And then brass funnels in there with a dried kelp filter. So in theory, we should just be able to do that and then start getting cooked kelp in here. At least that's the hope. Just watch for a moment. Make sure it's going to work. Yep, there we go. So, well, it's turned, but it hasn't gone in. Probably help if I set them to actually take stuff in. Yep, there we go. So we'll pull stuff out of there into a basin where it'll get pressed. So let's get this thing some power if we do that. Get our encased chain drives again. We should be able to do this. I think that'll work. Save us a gearbox or two. Yep, that's got power. And then we'll have the blocks come out into a big vault over here. And we just need a bunch of funnels. So that will go in. Uh, we should probably filter it as well, actually. So let's quickly make a kelp block. Though, to be honest, do we need to filter it? No, we don't. But I'm going to anyway, because it makes me feel better. And then the last thing we need to do... Look at that. Perfect space. But we just need to connect that to a storage interface, which is a little bit high, actually. So let's hide back our excitement for a moment. We'll just do it in the floor there instead. And, uh, yep, yeah, storage interface. There we go. We'll take them out of there and go into there. And that is our kelp processing plant complete. That was nice and simple. We could probably make it look a bit better, though, couldn't we? In fact, we could probably make this whole area look a little bit better. We need to do some decoration outside here as well. Maybe just get a couple of vaults or some boxes or something down. And I kind of do want to do a little bit of work on the shipping yard out the front here as well. And the road needs some texture. The wall needs some texture. But sadly, that's going to have to be on the next episode because we're pretty much out of time for this video. And not only that, we've also reached day 3000. And I guess that means we're about due a movie. But thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.